Hey everyone, it's your boy Yan Zhao. Uh, I'd just like to start off by thanking everyone for coming and give a little explanation about what this channel is about. So this channel uh, is going to be about story and how you would construct stories, storytelling, uh, but we're also going to get into Dungeons and Dragons. The first project we're going to be doing is uh, the town of South Bay. So this is a small medieval fantasy setting and it's going to start me off on my creation of a D&D campaign. So it will take some months or a year to do the whole campaign, but I just wanna start off and we'll talk about the process as we go along. Uh, as we go along, we'll talk more about different types of stories, how you develop themes, how you develop settings and locations, how would you create different civilizations and make them feel real and not feel real. And when we go through this, we'll talk about a lot of different things. We'll talk about comic books and different books. I'm sure Tolkien and J.R.R. Martin will show up and we'll talk about different movies and we'll compare and contrast ones that work well and ones that don't work well and what sort of a story structure is it a classic hero's journey is it star-crossed lovers and whatnot and we'll also be talking about some history um, how did people in the ancient world view things how did people in the middle ages view things what were their motivations for doing things that they did and so we'll be looking at all of this and this will help you to build your own campaign uh, or if you want to write a story, a novel, uh, we'll be developing setting, we'll be developing characters and you will be able to take this and use it for your own. So I understand what you're saying. You're probably saying to yourself, Yan Zhao, Dungeons and Dragons, that's super nerdy. Yeah, it is, but... D&D is a great way to test out your story ideas because you're putting it in front of real people in a real setting. So you can have characters with different themes. So just to give one example, uh, I have this character, Grey Mist, a monk. He grew up his whole life in, um, in a monastery surrounded only by presumably other males and they had a very specific religious focus. So when I was making uh, this character, in some ways it was modeled after my best friend, who is an evangelical minister down in Rio de Janeiro. So this guy, you know, he's a great guy, but like it's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all the time. So how would that fit in with the party group? Now, obviously he wasn't... Uh, a Christian character, uh, Grey Mist, he, his religion is sort of a mix of Eastern Buddhism, Taoism, uh, with a healthy dose of atheism. He thought all gods were BS, uh, because even if they were real, um, you had to give them things and your power only comes through them. So when I started playing him, I played him very aggressively religious. He handed out pamphlets everywhere he goes. He went full Jehovah Witness on all the other characters. And the first day, uh, the look on the other party members' faces, they were just like, holy crap. Like they sort of have that panic when uh, you're approached by like uh, some Mormons in the street and you're like, oh man, how do I get out of here? So by judging their reactions, I knew that, ah, this is a very good thing. Because as a storyteller, you want to elicit certain reactions from your readers or your viewers or the people who are running your campaigns. Now, when you have other people in the mix, it's great to see, are you getting the reaction that you thought you get or were you totally off base? So the other people I was playing with, they ended up liking this guy. And why? because he was very sincere and even though he was very judgmental and uh, he could frankly be quite a jerk, um, he 
very much was sincere in the things that he did. He always tried for the best of the party. And even though he had some pretty harsh religious beliefs, um, he always proclaimed them in what he saw as for the benefit of others. So uh, there was a, a cleric who worshipped another god, obviously, and he would tell this cleric, no, 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 you got to watch out because the more powers that you get from your god, the more they're going to ask for you in return. And at what point do they start asking you to kill people for them? At what point do they start taking parts of your soul and twisting you into something else? So he was able to get across his point of view, and unfortunately, he died. God rest Grimus' soul. But when he died, people were very sad, and they wanted him back, including me. And had those jerks read the letters that he wrote, he might have been back. But that's neither here nor there. So in this campaign, our characters are going to start off in the city of South Bay, which is a port city, uh, which was recently taken over by a certain country about 80 years beforehand. And this is a, a geographically well-suited country because there are eastern continents and western continents. It's on the western, but it is the closest point to the eastern continent and relatively close to one uh, a city which uh, was the lead of a great empire. And it's great for trading. It's a good mix of cultures. Uh, so I want to explore those themes. And so some people might ask, well, why would you start with the city map? So one thing just in a Dungeons and Dragons setting uh, is I think that people underutilize their cities. And what I mean by that is what you'll find is um, people will use a lot of theater of the mind for the home cities. And that's great. Theater of the mind is awesome. Uh, I think it should absolutely be used. Leave as much to your audience or player's imagination as possible. But um, the city itself could be a real setting. It could be a real place where people can do more than just go to the blacksmith, go to the the uh, governor's tower, uh, go to the market, you know, find the inn. Um, that sort of limits it in. But so what I'm trying to do with South Bay is I want to create the whole of the town and some of the farm areas around it. Um, this campaign will be a little bit different than most um, in that taking from great RPGs of the past, uh, you have uh, a solid storyline that you need to get through, and you're not really getting out of South Bay for the first few levels. You'll be in the city, in the town, and around the area. So um, it's a good time to mention for the Dungeons & Dragons nerds that uh, this is going to be a little different than most campaigns because it's going to be... Uh, leveling up based on passing certain uh, certain checkpoints in the storyline. So there will be something that happened if you pass or fail or whatever happens uh, at these events, you will then level up. They're not all necessarily boss fights, so they're not 100% uh, uh, Japanese RPGs, but... They, they do have a um, sort of defined storyline that you will pass because certain things will happen at certain times, whether you're ready for them or not. And uh, just so everyone's wondering, uh, a lot of people would say, oh, well, it's just a game on rails. One thing that you always want to do is give people the illusion of choice without actually giving them real choice. Now, I know that sounds hard, and people are going to say, oh, but that takes away player's agency. Well, it only takes away player's agency if they realize what you're doing. So in South Bay, uh, before the things that will happen happen, 
there are also a number of mini quests, side quests, so that <clears throat> should the players not want to necessarily follow the storyline, they can do this. So this um, it's kind of similar to, uh, let's say, Tomb of Annihilation, if you've ever played that. You go to Port Nianzaro, uh, you basically get your main quest, which is to find the soulmonger whose uh, magics or whatnot don't allow people to come back from the dead. So what you do is you go out of the city and you start doing all this and that. And it also has sort of like gradated storyline. Like at this level, you know, it's kind of like a jungle crawl. And at that level, you find this and that. And, uh, you know, when you're when you've leveled up a bit, then you'll fight higher level bad guys. So we're doing the same thing. Uh, the only thing is we are keeping them within the city. And why would you want to keep people in the city? So the reason is uh, we are going to have very bad things happen to the city and people in the city. And we want people to develop an emotional connection to those people and to the city itself. Um, you know, a lot of times you'll have your murder hobos come to some new village and then stuff gets wrecked or people die. You know, the mayor's daughter dies of goblin inflicted wounds or something and it's like oh well that sucks okay see you later but this is a place where we want people to make friends where we want them to be like oh man i can't just run off from this town because this person needs me so that's how the city's going to work and in order to do that uh in my mind i need a map so a lot of people would say this is very much backwards. If you listen to George R. R. Martin, um, he basically, you know, wrote uh, most of the first uh, chapter of A Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones, without the map. It wasn't until later when um, they were trying to put out the world of Ice and Fire that he actually made a lot more of the map, a lot more of the world. So <clears throat> in similar ways, uh, I'm starting with South Bay, which is just one town. Uh, I do have some plans in mind for the general countryside, which I will make a map for that later. And in those, uh, we'll talk about, well, how do you draw a map? You know, what goes into it? Um, and then there's a little bit for that empire that I had mentioned, which is across the ocean. And we'll get into that too. So to start this off, uh, how did I come up with the town that I came up with? Well, first I knew um, just from some general brainstorming that I wanted a little bit of everything for this town. So it is part of um, an empire. Uh, it was newly acquired about 80 years in the past. So there's some people there who would have remembered uh, what the invasion and what the takeover was like. So we have a little bit of a uh, resistance and to the to the new leadership. And then um, setting wise, uh, this is going to be sort of a horror story, at least to start off with. And I really like the old horror stories from New England, like the American settler period. So 1600s, early 1700s things like that. And so um, I want the ground, um, the the general area and geography to be a little bit more like a North Carolina, Virginia. So we're going to see uh, quite a bit of farmland, especially right near the ocean. We're going to see some water. There's going to be mountains, big, big, big mountains, uh, but lots of forested area. So lots of deep, dark, kind of primal, untapped, untamed forest. So the the setting and the vibe is going to be a little bit New England, but when you get into the flora and fauna and a lot of the animals in the area, um, you are going to find a little bit more down south. Uh, so to start making this map, what did I do? Well, first uh, I went online to a 
city map generator and i'll post a link down in the description and i uh configured it for about the size i wanted it uh, there's a couple thousand people not a big town but big enough so that you've got more than one in you've got more than one shop uh that you would have uh, a reason to have a military garrison in the area um and so Basically, through refreshing it a lot, I got sort of the shapes uh, that I wanted. And maybe in another video, I'll go through uh, the site itself more thoroughly. So after getting what I wanted, um, I want a nice hand-drawn map because I think that looks better for the players. It sort of gives a little bit of an old-timey feel. Uh, so what I did was I printed out the computer generated map uh, which is very generic and it uh, sort of divides sections of the city up and as you can see it had a wall and it had a waterfront and some roads going into the city and so I basically just traced over it and in tracing over it I changed the shape of some buildings and uh, a little bit of the road and in my mind instead of the predefined areas like they had, I changed uh, a bit. So uh, we have different governmental districts. We have uh, an area where most of the religious buildings are, are put. Uh, we have, you know, different residentials, but marketplace, craftsmen. Uh, we've got a port, so you got to have somewhere to store the goods before they're shipped out by land or stored before they can be loaded off onto another ship to go uh, somewhere. And uh, then we have areas outside of the town. So in the storyline, we'll find out that South Bay has been growing. And it's mostly due to this expanded trade. It is the ostensible reason or the excuse uh, for why it was taken over, because it would really aid this empire in their trade with the other continent. And so putting this together, what you see is there are buildings uh, on the roads outside of the city walls. So this would have been pretty common uh, because what happened back in the day is rich people built those walls and rich people generally wanted to keep the rich people safe. And of course, you would build it around whatever town was there, but as the town continued to grow, uh, you would have all sorts of buildings outside of the walls. So anyone who's a fan of Attack on Titan, uh, you would recognize this sort of scheme where uh, in that show, it's an anime for anyone who doesn't know, you have humanity is being attacked by giant things that eat them and uh, there are three walls, and inside each wall is sort of a different strata of society. And the uh, high muckety mucks all live in the inner wall because, of course, it's the safest. So, this is um, actually based on normal town growth, especially for the medieval Middle Ages. Um, you would also see that a bit in uh, classical times. You can't really rebuild your walls very easily although in some cities you would see them adding walled in sections as time went by but in general uh, if you were outside of the wall uh, when an invasion happened you know you would get some advance notice so you could run in but uh, your house is probably screwed uh, probably be burned and your livestock eaten so not much luck for those people. So I'm going to finish up this video here. And I just want to thank everyone for tuning in. So in the next video, uh, I will go from how do you go from this small map, which I drew on an eight and a half by 11, uh, to getting to actual battle maps that you could use in a D&D &D game. So if you like this video, please could use a thumbs up and click to subscribe for semi-regular content.